Sophomore chemistry, scientific notation. In chemistry, we deal with some very large numbers, like the one that you were inter introduced to in unit one, or a mole. That's 602 followed by 21 zeros. We also deal with some very small numbers, like the mass of an electron. That's 31 zeros followed by 91 kilograms. Imagine how difficult it would be multiplying these two together to try to find the mass of a mole of electrons. I don't even think your calculator would be able to handle that type of calculation. This is why we use scientific notation. Scientific notation is a method of representing very large or very small numbers in a standardized form. That form is listed here, m times 10 to the n, where m is a number between 1 and 10, and n is a whole number integer. When you do this with your calculator, and that is if your calculator is in scientific mode, it's expressed as m, or some number, with an, a capital E followed by an n, a whole number, either positive or negative. In your calculator, the times 10 is represented by the letter E. So let's see the steps that we have to go to to change a number from standard form into scientific notation. Here is our number here. Our first step is to put the decimal point in its place right at the end. Step two is to decide where the decimal point must end up so that there is only one number to its left. Remember, we're trying to get a number that's less than 10, but greater than 0. If we put the decimal point after the 2 in this number, then it definitely fits that criteria. Our next step now is to count how many places the decimal point has to bounce over so that it's in the proper spot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we rewrite our number in the form m times 10 to the nth as follows. 2.5 times 10 to the number of spaces the decimal point had to bounce over, or 9. Now let's do this number. Again, decide where the decimal point must end up so that there's only one number to its left, and that number has to be a non-zero number. Right after the 5. Count how many places you bounce over to get there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Rewrite our number in its proper format. In this case, because we moved our decimal point to the right, the n in our m times 10 to the n will be negative. Or 5.79 times 10 to the negative fifth. We can use numbers that are in scientific notation to form calculations very easily. Let's do some addition and subtraction. But before we get there, let's review. Scientific notation expresses a number in the form of m times 10 to the nth, where m is a number that is greater than 1, but less than 10. And n is either a positive or negative integer, whole number integer. So here we have 4 times 10 to the 6th, plus 3 times 10 to the 6th. If the exponents are the same, we simply add or subtract the numbers in front and bring the exponent down unchanged. 4 plus 3 is 7, times 10 to the 6th. Or 4 minus 3, or 1, times 10 to the 6th. What if the exponents are not the same? The first thing that we have to do is move the decimal point to make them the same. 
if we move the decimal point over to the right, then, then we reduce the exponent by 1. Now the exponents are the same, and we can add them together. 43.00 times 10 to the fifth. Is that good scientific notation? No. Remember, the M, or the 43, has to be a number that's greater than 1 or less than 10. Therefore, because 43 is way greater than 10, we have to shift the decimal point. And in this case, we need to move it over 1, which would take our exponent up one number, or 4.3 times 10 to the 6th. To avoid this problem, what you should always do is find the smaller number of the grouping and move the decimal point on the smaller number. If we had done that in the original problem, we would have focused on the 3 times 10 to the 5th and moved the decimal point over so that the number, or our exponent, increases. In order to increase our exponent, we need to move the decimal to the left. Therefore, our 3 times 3 in the 3 times 10 to the 5th now becomes 0.3 times 10 to the 6th. The exponents are the same. We can add our numbers together, and we get 4.30 times 10 to the 6th. Is that good scientific notation? You bet. Here's a problem for you. 2.37 times 10 to the negative 6th plus 3.48 times 10 to the negative 4th. Remember, we want to move or change the exponent on the smaller number. Because our exponents are negative, the smaller number is the 2.37 times 10 to the negative 6. I want to add two numbers to that, or two exponents to that, in order to get it in the same format as 10 to the negative 4. Therefore, I need to move my decimal point to the left two spaces. Now our exponents are the same, and I can add our numbers together. 3.5037 times 10 to the negative fourth. When using scientific notation relating to a measurement, only the sig figs are shown. Significant figures are handled in a different podcast. Using your calculator to calculate with scientific notation is very easy. For example, if you took point zero 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 two eight one four and multiplied that times five point zero times ten to the fourth you would get one point four times ten to the negative fourth. The easy way to do this is to first convert the point zero 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 two eight one four to scientific notation or two point eight one four times ten to the negative nine. Enter the two point eight one four as you normally would. And then press the E E key or exponent EXP key on your calculator. Look over your calculator. On some of the TI-84s and TI-83s, the EE key is actually one of the second numbers, or the ones in yellow, or the ones in blue, where you have to hit the blue or yellow key first before you hit that one. Once you push this, it puts it in scientific notation mode, and you should see the E come up. Your next step is to put in the exponent. If it's a positive exponent, you just type in the number. If it's a negative exponent, then you need to push the positive slash negative button on the lower right-hand side of your calculator. This will change the exponent to a negative number. And then you type in the number per usual. Your next step after that is to push the multiplication key as if you're multiplying any two numbers together. Once you do this, you can get your answer. That concludes this podcast. Thanks for listening.